last night I found out that from Robert Rudnick that Jeff White, founder of Survivors of the Abortion Holocaust, which I used to, a ministry I used to work for in California, and the former um, police liaison for Operation Rescue, which um, was once the, um, was the largest uh, nonviolent civil disobedience movement in the history of the United States, even though it failed. No, virtually no one knows that, but he was once their national police liaison. Jeff White was convicted, uh, according to Robert, of dozens of counts of felony uh, fraud, um, something to do with insurance companies, um, some kind of a, um, a business or ministry. I'm not sure which it was. I don't really know anything directly about it, but that he was running uh, that was uh, helping people get into rehab. Now, uh, admittedly, as I said, I don't know anything about it. I did used to work for Jeff White for years, and I was arrested multiple times as a survivor of the abortion holocaust on their campus life tours years ago. But I want to talk about Jeff, and let me preface it by saying that uh, Jeff is, um, by um, all reasonable categories, a very good man, a very admirable man, uh, someone I uh, have modeled myself after and would continue to model myself uh, after, wish to continue to model myself after in my life and ministry. In many ways, a courageous man, a man with whom I have had very sharp disagreements. And I do want to talk about some of those disagreements, but the context of this is I'm not beating up on Jeff while he's down. He's a father of many children, beautiful children, and has more than the vast majority of Christian leaders in this country been outspoken, and and when I say this country, I'm talking about the United States of America, my primary audience, has been outspoken as a voice on behalf of the preborn children who are murdered by abortion. So that's the context of the things that I'm saying uh, in this little commentary here. But Jeff was arrested, charged with multiple felonies. He's apparently, according to Robert Rudnick, awaiting uh, sentencing. I haven't uh, looked in on the case. I'm off of social media. I've been kicked off of Facebook multiple times on both my accounts, so I've sort of given up on Facebook for the moment. But uh, Jeff is an interesting person. He represents uh, one of the fragments of what was Operation Rescue, something that has sort of fallen off of the, the rungs of uh, public consciousness uh, in terms of the rescue movement that existed in the 1980s all the way through the late uh, or the early 90s when people were actually stopping uh, legalized abortion by actually interposing their bodies. And to skip to, to make a long story short, let me say, um, the main point of contention I had with Jeff was between me and Jeff and Neil Horsley. Jeff always mocked the late uh, brother Neil Horsley, um, who ran for governor in Georgia and whose campaigns I supported. He always mocked him and mocked me as like a Don Quixote and uh, I felt like I was his faithful slave, Pedro, his protege, his, his unquestioning supporter. But the problem with that analogy, Jeff White, by the way, also said that I was crazy, that Neil was crazy, and that our idea was crazy, specifically our idea that we should oppose the federal government at the state level, try to nullify, uh, interpose, and or secede, a um, message that Matt Truella has fully begun to champion uh, since Neil Horsley's uh, death, in a way that doesn't acknowledge the work of Neil Horsley. Nonetheless, I wish Matt well on that. I wish he would quit his um, uh, quit focusing on preaching because his theology sucks so bad. Speaking of Matt Truella, and just focus on that message. But that message now mostly championed by Matt, abolish human abortion. People like T. Russell Hunter. Uh, Rusty Thomas, Matt Churella, was mostly at that time being championed by people like Neil Horsley, uh, myself, some of the original uh, publishers of the Abortion Abolitionist magazine, before T. Russell Hunter uh, hijacked that, um, those words and the concepts, those words and concepts. Nonetheless, uh, now, and also by Roy McMillan, who wrote a book called Preparing for Secession. When I showed that book to Jeff White, who's now been uh, convicted of multiple dozens of felony counts of, of fraud. And by the way, I'm sure the fraud, the so-called fraud, the things that they are accusing him of doing wrong, whatever, uh, 
let me put this in historical context. For example, our entire foundation of our country, the United States of America, is based on embezzlement. You could make the case it's based on the embezzlement of public funds by none other than Samuel Adams, not the man who, who brews the beer, okay, the Samuel Adams who fomented things like the Boston Massacre and the original Tea Party in Boston, Massachusetts. What I'm getting at is that uh, Jeff, if he uh, misdirected funds or didn't follow their rules or whatever technicality they caught him on, I'm sure he did good with whatever money he had at his disposal. And I'm sure the good that he did was a much more efficient, I have no doubt, a much more efficient good than the U.S. government or any other, uh, virtually any other agency would have done. So I am not criticizing Jeff about that. But this does possibly represent in some ways a watershed moment because the big disagreement I had with Jeff initially was his support of George W. Bush, the war in Iraq, the war, the war in Afghanistan, his championing of, of George W. Bush, and also with Reverend Michael Bray. They, they just loved George W. Bush, even though George W. Bush involved us in horrible, criminal, illegal wars, immoral wars that have ki killed, you know, if you count all the entire war on terror, millions of people have led directly or indirectly to the death of millions of people who never attacked the United States, extremely unchristian, extremely antithetical to the Prince of Peace. And this, the hypocrisy of Christians unquestioningly, unqu can I say the word, unquestioningly supporting and unconditionally, virtually unconditionally supporting the Republican Party and the Bush regime it was disgusting. I was there on the day we first began bombing Iraq. In um, I was in San, uh, San Francisco at UC Berkeley. I was protesting it. And I was the only one among survivors of the abortion holocaust. And Jeff tolerated me. I'll give him that. But who was against, clearly and solidly, uh, knew the war was a, a terrible mistake for Christians, for Muslims, for everyone in the world, and ultimately for the government of the United States of America. Now, so that was my first point of departure from the, the pro-lifers who were just, let's just say it, sucking the dick of the Republican Party, sucking the big long schlong of the establishment, all right? And now where has it gotten them? That's the point I want to make now. Jeff poo-pooed the idea of secession, nullification, or interposition, laughed it, mocked uh, at it, and laughed at it, even when his good, dear friend Roy McMillan um, uh, advocated it, when Neil advocated, viciously mocked us, uh, when his donors said that I should stop talking about the Nuremberg Files at the um, ACOG, American Coalition of OBGYNs, even though it was being extremely effective in deterring those OBGYNs, making them feel a righteous fear that, that we were actually getting their images and, and compiling do dossiers, Jeff White pulled me in to the office and said, you've got to stop it because my donors uh, say that it's too hot, it's too much, they can't handle it. Even though I wasn't getting arrested and I was being effective in creating that deterrent. And so, and so the rug was pulled out from under my feet and it was all, um, the, the, the pretext for all these things was the idea that somehow the Republicans and the establishment and, and the establishment donor base and this way of doing things was going to lead to some kind of a success. Bullshit, baloney, lies, and where has it gotten Jeff? And where is the establishment now? And why have they not uh, come to his defense? His butt buddies, the federal government people, the FBI, the P and believe me, if Jeff pled guilty to dozens of felonies, it's because he copped a deal. I have no doubt. I don't know all the inside information about Jeff, but we were using the Bain Act in California, all right? To And this doesn't even touch on the whatever schemes he may or may not have been involved in personally that they may have had on him. But to get him not to fight it, to get him to cop a plea, make no mistake, Jeff, that is a plea. If Jeff copped to those felonies, it's because they had other shit, other things on him that were heavier and worse that uh, gave him the incentive to um, plead guilty to these felonies. So that's what I have to say. I think the only thing that comes next, it would have been easier if we did it decades ago, but the only thing that comes next at this point is a, a huge paradigm shift to do what Matt Truella is advocating and uh, elect representatives and elect governments at the state and local level to defy the way the gays did, the way the sodomites did, when um, 
California said Proposition 8, you can't have gay marriage. They're a much smaller minority than we supposedly are. And they, in fact, stood up to state, local, and federal government. And, and they were loud, and they didn't uh, give any quarter. And they were, in fact, to our eternal shame, more virile and courageous than the people who claim to be defending the preborn babies are. Well, we're not. We're not defending the preborn babies. It's time for us to wake up, repent, organize to interpose power, demand, demand a redress of the grievances of these babies. Nullify the, the, the wicked, ungodly, murderous laws that allow them to be slaughtered and secede, if necessary, from the United States of America.